Hello, we're doing chapter 5, section 5, complex numbers and roots. So, in the previous video, we introduced the idea of what many teachers and many mathematicians call imaginary numbers. And your book calls imaginary numbers, so we're going to use imaginary numbers. However, like I said, I like the idea of what, what the famous mathematician Gauss called them, lateral numbers. I wish I could get some grassroots movement going for that one, but we'll see how it goes. We're going to use that idea to solve equations that may not make sense with uh, what we call real numbers. So let's talk about the first one. I get x to the second power equals negative 81. So this connects with what I was starting to explain in the first video. This means I have a number that's being multiplied by itself. That number is either going to be positive negative or zero. Zero times zero equals zero, so it's not going to be zero. If that number is positive, a positive multiplied by a positive equals a positive, not negative. Okay? If that number is negative, a negative multiplied by a negative equals a positive. Again, not negative. Now, you might be thinking, why don't you have a positive times a negative? Because that's not what exponents are. The exponent means I'm multiplying a number by itself. Negative 9 is not positive 9. Those are two different numbers. They're even opposites of each other. So that doesn't work. But in order to make it work, this is where we introduce the idea of imaginary numbers, or like we said, I like to call them lateral numbers. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and don't forget you get two roots. You get one positive, one negative. And that's positive or negative no matter what happens on the inside. So the square root of negative 81 is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 81. 81 is a perfect square, so that's going to be 9. The square root of negative 1 is i. So my solutions are positive 9i and negative 9i. Now you're probably thinking, but isn't i negative? No. i, which is the square root of negative 1, is not positive or negative. Okay? And I know that that's mind-blowing. All right. If I I guess I guess you can get by with saying if I just have i then you can think of that as being a positive number because it's actually 1 times i whether it's positive or negative comes from the coefficient. So the so my two answers are positive 9i and negative 9i. Positive 9 times i and negative 9 times i. Let's work with this one. I get 3x to the second power plus 75 equals 0. I'm going to add negative 75 to both sides of my equation. I get 3x to the second power equals negative 75. Ta-da! The opposite of multiplying by 3 is divide by 3, or multiply by 1 third, and I get x to the second power equals negative 25. So just like up here I had x to the second power equals negative 81, 25 is a perfect square, that's great, but negative 25 is not. I'm going to take the square root, don't forget I get two answers, one positive, one negative, and I get one positive, one negative, the square root of 25 is 5, the square root of negative 25 is 5i. This is the same as x equals 5i and x equals negative 5i. Remember, there are always, always two solutions to a quadratic. Two of them right here, two of them right here. x to the second power equals negative 36. If I take the square root of both sides, don't forget the plus or minus. The square root of 36 is 6. The square root of negative 1 is i, so I get x equals 
plus or minus 6i. Now that's a lot of perfect squares. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna skip and do this one. I'll save that one for the last. I'm gonna skip and do this one. I'm seeing a lot of perfect squares all over the place. Nine x to the second power plus 25 equals zero. 25 and nine are both perfect squares. I wonder what's gonna happen. I'm gonna add negative 25 and get nine x to the second power equals negative 25. I'm gonna divide by nine. Last time when I divided, I had 75 divided by 3. That worked out. This time, no decimals. At least not right now. Don't change that to a decimal. I get x to the second power equals negative 25 ninths as a fraction. Take the square root. Don't forget I get two of them. And I get x equals one positive, one negative, two different answers. The negative one, square root of negative one is gonna be i. The square root of 25 is five. The square root of nine is three. And I just put the i over on that side. So I had perfect squares on all the problems I've been working on, even when it ended up as a fraction with perfect squares, so that was easy. What happens if I don't have a perfect square? So you got x squared, plus 48 equals zero. Add negative 48 to both sides. And I get x squared equals negative 48. I'm gonna take the square root. Don't forget to do the plus or minus. Now I'm gonna break this down. 48, I want the largest perfect square that is a factor of 48. So I go through my list of perfect squares. One always works, so you can skip it. Four is the next perfect square. Yeah, that's four times 12, that's good. So I'll use that, but let's see if I can find a bigger one. Nine, no, 48 divided by nine doesn't give me a whole number. So four times, I'm sorry, nine times five is 45, and nine times six is 54. So you're gonna get part, part, part of a factor, so that's not gonna work. Um, lost my place. I did nine. The next one is 16. Yes, 48 is 16 times three. So I'm going to use that instead of four times 12 because it's a bigger perfect square. Then I can try 25. That's not a factor. Then I can try what I'm up to um, 36. That's not a factor. And now I'm up to 49, which is above 48. So what I'm going to get is plus or minus the square root of negative one times the square root of 16 times the square root of three. This is i, this is four, and this is just the square root of three. So the way I'm gonna write my solution first the, properly, two of them, one's positive, one negative, square root of 16 is four, the square root of negative one is i, and the square root of three is just square root of three. And that's two of them, positive four i square root of three, and negative 4i squared of 3. All right, we'll see you in the next video.